well, you hear that. Uh, if anybody needs a good pizza recipe, please let me know. But first things first, here at FirstCon, uh, welcome to my presentation about sharing communities. Uh, this presentation was last year published as a publication. Uh, we investigated sharing communities, their workings, their structures based on interviews. So who am I? I'm Thomas Geras. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Applied Science in Munich. And my research focus is uh, cyber intelligence and recently also information sharing and um, sharing communities. So why did we investigate sharing communities? So the first idea came out of curiosity since my co-author, Thomas Schreck, he is a longtime member at first. And he oftentimes or sometimes talked at the beginning of my PhD about his times at first. So I got curious. I wanted to know more about those um, sharing communities that do a lot of good things for our cyber defense, but also for our society in general. So I dig deeper. I uh, identified that there are some research gaps regarding the um, structures, but also the workings in sharing communities. So we decided to conduct interviews. Uh, we conducted 25 video interviews with uh, experts from around the world who are members in various sharing communities. Our sample consisted of very experienced experts or professionals. So many of them were already were in the business for more than 20 years, and some of them were already uh, there or in the business when the first communities were created. So we used the findings of the interviews to answer three research questions. And in addition, we also used an additional step of analysis with the social technical systems theory to better understand the interrelated nature of sharing communities and also the interrelated nature of challenges we identified. And these two aspects, so the findings of the interviews and also the results of our analysis are part of my talk today. So before I start with the findings, I want to uh, create an equal understanding of sharing communities. So sharing communities are collectives of individuals and organizations. The members share mutual support, resources, expertise, or incident data. Ideally, also cyber for intelligence. And prominent examples are FIRST or FS Isaac, but there are also many, many smaller communities and less formal. So let's dive into my first research question. And here we wanted to understand the organizational structures established in sharing communities. So we identified that we can describe those organizational structures to the different types of communities, the member structure within these communities, the roles that members take on, and the way of collaboration. Furthermore, we identified that there are some factors that influence those four factors or aspects, uh, such as the size of the community or the member maturity. Okay, I will start off with the different types we identified. So some communities are open, so basically anybody can join them. There are no entry rules. In contrast, there are also closed communities where the entry is based on strict entry rules and even a fee might be mandatory. Furthermore, there are also topic or incident related communities. So these communities are temporary. They are created for a specific incident and they are usually closed after the incident and we can imagine them as a task force. Groups also differ in the level of formality. So that some groups are very formal based on legal agreements um, where it's clearly defined what to do, what to share, with whom and how. Um, some of those formal communities also have dedicated employees, such as a manage more, management board, executive employees that organize, for example, um, meetings, meetups to build trust. They also have uh, um, operational employees, so they have a clear hierarchy, first, for example. In contrast, there are also non-formal communities. These communities work without any legal frameworks or legal agreements, uh, without any NDAs, and this might be a group of preferred security workers that exchange information across different organizations. So there are also some of the non-formal communities are also called the hidden clubs, and these communities are all about trust, and trust is crucial and paramount for their collaboration. Entry in such hidden club is only possible if an active member of such a community invites one and votes for one, or the other active members vote for the entry of the new member. And also, only the active members know about those hidden clubs, usually. Now the question is, what does it help us to know all of this? Well, the type of the community somehow dictates what you can expect to receive. So usually in an open community, more automatically generated incident data or data in general is shared and also the quality is usually lower. 
And the juicy stuff, when, uh, as one expert called it, is shared in the hidden club. So the deep contextualized cyber threat intelligence, high quality, um, eventually from a very fresh incident that is not even publicly announced. Okay, now I move on to the second aspect that builds the organizational structures. And here we identify that various entities participate in sharing increase as individuals, but also as re uh, representatives of organizations. Um, this might be researcher, engineers, analysts, executives, et cetera, you can name it. And they can be from C-certs, certs, governments, ISPs, or enterprises. We identified, however, that the member structure is often undefined in sharing communities and even unknown sometimes, and that it's very hard to identify a specific entity. Nevertheless, we learned also from the interviews that this would be crucial for good information sharing and also collaboration. The next aspect that builds the organizational structures are the roles that members take on in those communities. And here we identified two probably very obvious roles, which is the producer and the consumer. So the producer is someone who is producing CTI, um, is generating it, is sharing it, and the consumer is someone who is using it, but also is giving something back to the community. For example, giving back feedback, or is also sharing back, is taking part in um, meetings or meetups. In addition, we also identified a role called sharing enabler. And the sharing enabler is someone who's gives, who gives the permission to one representative of the organization to take actively part in the community, but also gives the permit to share and gives also financial and time resources. Furthermore, there's also a, call, a role called broker or proxy. And this is a role that collects CTI, forwards it to specific entities, and also sometimes acts as an anonymizer between entities that do not communicate with each other. Furthermore, there's also a code host, and the host is usually a group organizer or a um, group administrator. So for example, first would be a kind of host, and this role is taking on the organizational task within the community. Last but not least, there is also kind, a specific kind of consumer. Uh, we heard the names lurker, leecher, but also sometimes the name is a free rider because usually those kind of consumers, they are not giving anything back to community. So no feedback, no, no sharing back. And even though we all start at some point as a lurker and leecher or as a free rider, uh, too many of them threaten the existence of sharing communities. And so they are quite bad for the communities, but also for themselves, since the benefits I will describe later on um, are more likely if you're an active member. So please keep this in mind. Well, the last aspect that builds the organizational structures are, is the collaboration or the way of collaboration. And here we identify that different tools are used. So for example, for communication, Slack, Signal, Zoom, et cetera, there are much more or many more. Um, for sharing, we heard oftentimes MISP, but also other tools are used like Eclectic IQ or in some smaller communities, uh, tools like Dropbox or GitHub were mentioned. What was quite surprising is that the mailing list is still very popular not only for communication, which is okay, I would say, but also for exchanging information, uh, since I guess we have much better tools for exchanging. In general, we identified a lack of standardization between different communities um, regarding the tools they use, but also regarding the taxonomies, uh, which makes it quite cumbersome for members that participate in different communities. communities. They have to um, get used to many tools and taxonomies uh, day by day. Okay, now I move on to the second research question we had. And this one was two-folded. So the first part is about the goals of members. And the next slide will be about the benefits of participation. And the question here is, why do all the members do the mostly voluntary work? And the reasons were quite altruistic. So members want to support each other. They want to contribute to society. And they do this by informing other members about current threats, giving early warnings, or creating a safer environment in general. The another goal was also the improvement of self-help. So members achieved this through a better understanding of the threat landscape or through continuous defense adjustment. However, we also learned that the goals of members differ between the members and also that the goals might differ between the members and the community, which can be a problem since similar goals for the synergy, various competing goals can slow down the overall effectiveness of sharing communities. 
Okay, now comes a slide that I hope will motivate some of the lurker or leecher or free rider um, to be more active since the benefits are more likely if you are an active member. So besides the probably very obvious benefit of receiving incident data or ideally intelligence, um, a lot of knowledge is shared in sharing communities and knowledge is shared in different forms. For example, um, sharing reports, scripts, uh, best practices in general, and all of this knowledge sharing leads to resource saving savings, which is also a great benefit. Knowledge sharing comes hand in hand with the relationships we build in sharing communities, and through the relationships we gain access to people with different skills and expertise, and we can ask them for help and support in emergencies. But as I already mentioned, this is more likely if we are an active member and in a very open community, it's quite uh, rare. Another benefit is um, another benefit is the increase in visibility and also learning about threats and warnings quite early. Well, now I move on to the challenges. So this is the third research question we had. What are the challenges in sharing communities? And you can imagine there are many challenges in sharing communities, uh, such as the uh, low quality CTI or low quality data, missing context, missing feedback, but also the work overload, the amount of data, but also the amount of sharing communities. Further, we have a lack of newcomer, we have a lack of sharing, we have the creation of subgroups, and ultimately, we have a lack of trust. Today, I don't want to jump into each specific challenge since there are just too many. I think today it's more beneficial for you uh, to understand that many of the challenges are interrelated and have multifactored roots. So for example, we have the lack of sharing, we have the creation of subgroups, and we also have the lack of trust. We further have the work overload and the missing feedback. If you are interested to learn more about those challenges in depth, please take a look into our actual publication. We further identified that the majority of challenges are social issues. This is not surprising since a lot of the work in the sharing community takes place on a personal level between humans, and we are also much better in solving the technical challenges than the social. Well, now I move on from our findings of the interviews to our analysis with the social technical systems framework. And uh, this framework helped us to better understand the interrelated nature of workings in sharing community and also the interrelated nature of um, challenges. So if we want to improve sharing communities, we have to work on solving those challenges. To solve those challenges, we have to understand the roots. However, as I already mentioned, the roots of the challenges are quite complex and diverse and also interrelated. So we need a holistic view to better understand them. Uh, since we noticed many social issues in sharing communities, we researched if there's already an approach that um, knows this problem, so the problem of the integration of social behavior um, with the technology we use. Uh, we were successful. We found the social technical systems framework or theory that exactly treats this problem. So what is the social technical systems theory or the framework? So the framework helps us in designing and managing complex work environments. And these complex work environments, they consist of social and technical components that influence each other and also interact with each other. So exactly what we have in a sharing community. In a sharing community, we have the tools we use and also the how to work, how we work together aspect, so the social aspect. Therefore, sharing communities can be viewed as a social technical system or as complex work environments within this theory. But what is the bad added value of doing it? What is the added value of viewing them as a social technical system? Well, it helps us to simplify things. One benefit of this approach is that we can represent, analyze, and understand those complex systems or complex work environments and their interrelated social and technical elements. And the goal of this, of this approach is that we can identify relationships, potential conflicts, and gaps between the various system components. And by doing that, this helps us to uh, better understand the integrated nature of challenges and also of workings in sharing communities. And by doing that also improves us, um, helps us to improve sharing communities and also the productivity. Now the question is, how do we achieve this? Well, as already mentioned, through simplification, how do we simplify? Well, we can represent any complex work environment as a hexagon with three social and three technical elements. And this hexagon is called the social technical systems framework. And to make it a little bit more clear, I prepared a 
slide where we will see the visual form. So we have the three social elements of the system of our complex work environment, in our case of our sharing communities. So we have the goals, we have the people, and we have the culture within, within our complex work environment. We further have the three technical elements, which is the processes and procedures deployed in our sharing communities, the infrastructure we rely on, and the technology we use. And a specific characteristic in social technical systems theory is that all of these elements are inter, uh, influence each other and are in, uh, inter interacting with each other. So a change in one element might influence another element. And the overall effectiveness of our sharing communities is limited if we do not consider a change of one element in the other elements. And so for example, if we change technology, if we change the sharing tool, this might influence the workings of members, so our people element, but also the achievement of goals. So we might choose a tool that is not made for achieving our goals. So we need to consider those influences. And to make it a little bit more complicated, our sharing communities are embedded in an outer frame. And this outer frame uh, represents the external factors that also influence our workings in sharing communities. So for example, we have the uh, regulations, for example, GDPR, or we have sanctions. So these regulations might prevent members from sharing, but also even from participating in communities. We also have some stakeholder like investors that might uh, give them sp some specific goals we have to achieve. So we need also to consider those external factors that influence our workings when we want to improve sharing communities. I know here a lot of practitioners and I'm more from the technical uh, theoretical side of the force. Um, so the question is, how did we use this framework? Well, what we did is we looked at each of the elements and we described them in general from the perspective of sharing communities. So we did not focus on a specific sharing community, sharing community. we did this for sharing communities in general. We then matched our findings from the interviews where we had some, since our interviews were focused on answering that free research question and not the STS framework. But ideally you would conduct interviews to investigate those elements and their interaction uh, within a specific community, for example, like FIRST. We then looked how these elements um, influence each other and what could be possible solution solutions for uh, potential conflicts. And this approach could also be used by a specific community like FIRST to investigate their workings and also to see how they could be improved. I know this is not an approach for the everyday member, it's more for researchers in the field and also for group organizers that want to improve their workings. So now I will speak a little bit about our results, but as already mentioned, we have a publication, so there is uh, much more info about uh, this topic. I will start off with the goals in our communities. So a goal is the desired outcome within a time frame. Goals also provide orientation and motivation. In our interviews, we identified that um, goals differ between members and also might differ between the community. However, clear goals promote collaboration and between members um, and therefore influence the people element or the selection of te technology, so the te uh, technology element. So a solution idea here is uh, to create a clear and shared understanding of the goals in the sharing community since similar goals foster synergy various competing goals can slow down the overall effectiveness of our workings. The next element is the people element. And the people in the sharing community are the members, but also in some specific communities, like first we have employees. In our interviews, we identified that the member structure is often undefined or unclear, and that we also have a high fluctuation in some sharing communities. However, um, the unknown member structure impacts the trust and therefore the cultural element. And this might also influence the achievement of goals and the goals element. Also the creation of subgroups or the limited amount of sharing we identified as challenges might be a um, consequence of the unknown member structure. So a solution idea here is to create a thoughtful member composition based on specific roles, skills, and characteristics. Um, eventually with a limited amount of members, since at some point it's just impossible to know all the members and trust will decrease.
Well, the next element is the culture element. And the culture is the norms, the values, the expectations, and the behaviors of members. And is usually brought from outside into the community and must be built within the members in the community. Uh, we identified in the interviews that there is a culture of fear in some communities and a culture of mistrust. So the members fear doing something wrong. And because of that, they do not share, for example. Um, however, a culture of trust is crucial uh, for sharing, but also for collaboration within sharing communities. And this also influences the achievement of goals. So a solution idea here is to do meetups like this event here, um, agreed goals and values with a stable member structure to improve the culture within our sharing communities. Okay, and now I move on to the three technical elements and I will start off with the processes and procedures. So processes contribute to the functionality and quality of collaboration and sharing. We identify that in some sharing communities there are already processes in place, for example, processes for new members. So they have um, vouching systems or voting systems um, or regular meetings, weekly meetings or meetups like this year. Um, the absence of processes can influence the workings of members and therefore the people element. So a solution idea here is to create processes for the most critical tasks such as sharing so all the members know what to do, how to share, what are the characteristics we want to um, offer to the other members and also what is the quality. Well, the next element, the technical element is the infrastructure and sharing communities rely on different kinds of infrastructure and the infrastructure is an essential foundation for the daily operations and interactions in sharing communities. Um, this is usually something we take for granted um, and it's not exclusively for sharing communities. For example, the traffic infrastructure, the event venues we use, the internet connectivity or electric systems. We identify that sharing communities rely on different kinds of infrastructure elements like event venues like this year for meetups and that incorrectly chosen event venues can prevent members from participating and therefore influence the culture element uh, due to visa restrictions, for example. Um, so a solution idea here is when organizing uh, meetups like this year, think of possible disruptions um, regarding the infrastructure. So for example, do we always have the same visa restrictions for the same people? So we would limit our capabilities of building trust for them. Well, the last technical element is the technology. And the technology in a sharing community are the tools, the systems, the platforms that provide a foundation for the most critical tasks in our communities. We identified that um, yeah, there is a lack of standardization between communities, between different communities, sorry, and that different communities use different tools and also taxonomies. Poor tools can negatively impact the members, so the people element, the culture, but also the achievement of goals. So a solution idea here is to work more on standardization so that we can make our members work more efficiently since um, right now they is, the work is quite cumbersome and they have to use different tools and taxonomies. Well, I already have to conclude my work. Um, through the interviews, we identified that a wide variety of organizational structures are established in sharing communities, knowing them, knowing the advantages and disadvantages can help us to um, achieve the maximum benefit of those groups. We identified that the go members have quite altruistic goals. However, the goals also might dif uh, differ between the members and also between the community, which can be an uh, issue for the overall effectiveness of our groups. The benefits we identified underscore the critical role of sharing communities for cyber defense, but also for our society in general and also for the members. However, please keep in mind, the benefits are more likely if you are an active and visible member. Many of the challenges we identified are interrelated and have social roots, which is not surprising as I already mentioned, a lot of the work takes place on a personal level between humans from different companies, and we are also much better in solving the technical challenges. While the social technical systems theory helped us to understand that social and technical elements are closely interrelated and significantly affect the structure and functioning of sharing communities. So if we want to improve sharing communities, we have to work on, um, 
we have to think holistic, sorry, and use holistic approaches. So my last words are dedicated to all the mostly voluntary working members. Um, thank you very much for improving our cyber defense and arigato. All right, anybody that has questions, we have microphones right here. Thank you for your speech. Uh, trust and sharing is uh, key to your research and presentation, right? Um, did you look at, uh, we are into cybersecurity with emphasis on security. Have you compared these guys or us with other sharing communities in academia or other places? How do we compare with others? Um, we did not compare sharing companies to other communities. Um, this field of research is quite new to cybersecurity. Um, I read about some communities that are also sharing. It's like more um, sharing of um, goods, I would say, in, in smaller communities um, where people live. But I did not compare the different levels of trust because I think trust regarding sharing is quite different to trust regarding sharing other um things like um, we have confidential stuff, we have um, advisories, uh, so we have to be sometimes very cautious, especially in bigger communities where we do not know the people. So there is creating or improving trust is quite dif difficult. So this is also a reason why we have a lot of subgroups. So people create subgroups because they don't trust the whole community and they start to share in smaller communities because they know the people, they have a vouching system, they have a voting system. So yeah. Maybe next article. Thank you. <laughs>